Hey, welcome to uh, Jen and Marshall reviewing Game of Thrones. I'm sorry that we missed out last week, but I was traveling all weekend, so we did not get a chance to uh, watch the episode and tape. So we caught up, um, but we're on this week's episode. So but we have to reference last week's episode yeah, so a little bit, just because it, it sort the pre- of So the last week's episode very... will probably bleed in a lot in, yeah. this, in this one. So, but... Um, I'm just happy that we saw Varys the Spider and Sam again because I have, feel like we haven't seen them in a while. Yeah, no, you're right. They're just like two. They're always no, you're Sam right, is yeah. always funny and Varys is always um, witty and 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 his always an enjoyable presence on, mm-hmm. in the scene. His interactions always sort of lend a certain like. I don't know, insidiousness to the whole plot, but yeah. at the same time, he sort of forwards things. Also, he's the only one that like, can actually talk to Tyrion on an equal level. I sort of feel like he's also a standard for the viewer in a lot of ways. I don't know. I mean, I think... I think... I don't know. I think he's far more invested in, in, you in think his he's own... he's invested? I oh, absolutely. I mean, I mean, he is, obviously. They're all invested. But I also feel like he's kind of on the sidelines looking in and just like... I don't know. I think... I think if As he, opposed to like Littlefinger, who's obviously... Both like a commentary character, but is mm-hmm. very invested. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's something about the spider. He just sort of seems like a proxy for the audience. Uh, I, I don't know. I think he. Um, I think he would throw if he thought that it was better for the kingdom. He would totally throw Tyrion off the wall. So who? So he's okay. Okay. I think he would. He would. He would kill any. He would. He would allow anyone to be killed if it meant that the kingdom, as a place for, I think he's. So you think he? He's more interested in the common man and like the well-being of the kingdom. He doesn't oh. really care. My feeling is. As opposed to like Cersei and Joffrey. Exactly. So Jon Snow okay. is captured by the wildlings. You get meet Rattleshirt for the first time. Ygritte keeps taunting oh, him. We love her. Sexually taunting him the whole we time. We love her. She's just and not just. I mean, she's she's a strong character. Yeah, she's a strong character. Um, so I guess th- the biggest plot point was that Rob's mother, Catalan, totally released Jamie Lannister. Yeah. And she, kind of she's now being... That's kind a strange thing to do. Well, she t- admitted to acting selfishly. She was totally doing it to save her children. It's hard, though, when you realize as a viewer you know more than she does. In yeah. terms of the state and the whereabouts of her children. Yeah. You kind of want to shake her and say, no, no, it, it won't do you any good. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard but to watch because you love her character so much. You want her yeah. to be acting. And you realize she's doing it from a good place. I mean, she's a mother, but yeah, she doesn't have all the information. She doesn't have do. all the information yeah. that we do. And that's, so. that's hard. That's yeah. hard to watch. Um, Cersei had some amazing scenes both in the last episode and in this episode. Right. So the last episode she had that really emotional breakdown in front of Tyrion. Where she basically just admitted that Jeffrey was A, the jo- product, yeah. Joffrey was the product of incest with her brother. Right. And then also that she couldn't control him. Right, and I yeah. think that was sort of revelatory because I sort of thought at some point that they were yeah, they, in a cahoots they were in tandem, some way. Yeah. But you and you were always very adamant that they weren't, and now I sort of see where you're coming from. Yeah. But then I guess this episode she tries to play uh, Tyrion by claiming that uh, she has his concubine, his prostitute Shay, but in fact that she doesn't. But Tyrion totally Tyrion plays just, it. Yeah. He rerolls with it. He makes her think that she has the upper hand, but she doesn't. I completely thought that she was going to bring out that wonderful I thought movie. so, too. Really? I thought so, too, yeah. I, I mean, if I don't know if that scene happened in the book, but if it yeah, did, I, I didn't remember. So. I was sort of like, I, I mean, because I was totally with her yeah. and totally with, and thinking, oh, God, what's Tyrion going to do? Mm-hmm. But... But no, he's, no, it was, yeah. it was yet um, again Tyrion proving himself to be the best part of the show. And then Daenerys' story is just keeps deviating from the book in really interesting ways. The the assassination of all the councilmen mm. last episode and this episode, she's God, having to, so awful. you know, pr- go to the House of Undying to pr- to go after her dragons. Like in the book, these sections, she's a very passive character. She kind of just does things because people say, "Why don't you go do this?" Mm-hmm. But the fact that they've created this little change. I think it just makes your character more interesting. Absolutely. I love the actress, too. I yeah, think there's Amelia something. Amelia Clark. She's so lovely, and there's something about her face and the way that she just, mm-hmm. she registers every single emotion. Mm-hmm. So kind of, um, this, like, in, yeah, really intense degree. So what didn't work for you this episode? Um, this episode specifically, pretty much all, I thought that the segues were really nice between, mm-hmm. you know, they'd be talking about Daenerys and her dragons, and then they'd cut to a scene with Daenerys and her dragons. I thought that was, I mean, everything flowed really nicely. I always just really appreciate 
that kind of fluidity, uh, yeah. especially for those of us who haven't read the books. And this one jumped around a lot from location to location. But there was a kind of underlying thread to it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Whereas opposed to the last one, it was like, it was chopped up great scenes, mm -hmm. but there was no underlying fluid mm -hmm. thread. Mm -hmm. And I, re as someone who really, did, yeah. and I think that viewers who haven't read the books can agree. You need that thread. You need that thread. You really do, because it's so easy to lose track mm -hmm. of who's who, who's with what family, what they're doing, what their name is, mm -hmm. where they are. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's really nice to have sort of, yeah, just an underlying mm -hmm. consistency. Um, and this episode had that. Yeah, I think this episode was, I mean, it was about building tension, but it was about, talk about really being on the cusp of something. You know, Daenerys mm -hmm. is on the cusp of, you know, going to the House of Undying to get mm -hmm. her dragons. The, all of King's Landing and Tyrion are on the cusp of, of seeing what's going to happen with, uh, Stannis's navy. Mm -hmm. The Jon Snow is on the cusp of having to, you know, prove his worth or do something to to, to get himself out of the situation. Rob is going to find out what the consequences are for you know deciding he's interested in this girl. There wasn't a whole lot of revelations. No, but except I except the one at the end that yes, Bran is not dead. Yeah, yeah, no, of course. But you sort of knew that on some level. Yeah. I mean, I guess like as a as a viewer, you just kind of knew, like... But then you never know with this show. That's yeah, you do. You never know. But I almost feel like there would be more fanfare if, Brown, if he was killed. No. Yeah. There just would be. There yeah. would be. I mean, he's such a small but pivotal character. Yeah. And you just see that, like, in terms of... I feel like he plays off of Tyrion just in terms of... Theon. No. Tyrion. Really? In terms of being someone who is maimed. Who yeah. is somehow deficient physically, mm -hmm. and yet is mentally more astute and mm -hmm. forward-thinking mm -hmm. than any of the other characters. Well, I'm going to give this one three golden dragons out of five. Out of five? Yeah. Um, so now we have found out that I have six dire wolves to yes, work with. Yes, six dire wolves. Which is we were wrong. kind of awesome. It's okay, so you have yeah. one more rank. Me, yeah. you were wrong. Yes, I was wrong. I deferred to you. Um... Oh. Give this four and a half direwolves. Okay. I really enjoyed this episode. I thought it was definitely building up. There was a lot of, of momentum and tension, but I thought that I just really appreciated how fluid it was and how smart mm -hmm. it was in terms of just building things, mm -hmm. and yeah, just building things yeah. in a in a solid, smart way. Yeah. I think this is one of those episodes that yeah, the scenes were great. What it's building to is great. I don't think this is an episode that I mean, unless I'm watching it all the way through. I think there are certain episodes. I'd revisit just as individual episodes. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is one that I would ever revisit. Yeah. No, it's true. I think the last one, though, the one oh, that we yeah, did absolutely. review, that was those great. scenes with um, Jon Snow and uh, Egret were, yeah. I would just, yeah, they no, I'd hilarious. have them on a like, constant loop just, just, just for the fun of it. <laughs> okay, um, guys, thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Please subscribe. So to glad to be back. Please subscribe to the Wall Street Journal YouTube channel. Uh, please like, please comment, and share. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed this one. Sorry about missing out last week. And we will see you next week yes. where it looks like the Battle of Blackwater is going to happen. There's some serious stuff happening. Yeah. All right. Uh, love you, sweetheart. I love you. All right. See you guys. Bye.